gracious God. Hallelujah. You know the hearts of everyone. You know the minds. You know the situation that they're involved in. You're able, God, to loose the bounds. You're able, God, to comfort the broken heart, the bereaved, oh God. You're able to bring back the backslider. You're able to save the unsaved. God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we're asking, hallelujah, you said everything we do. And word I mean, do it in your name, Lord. We're doing this in the name of Jesus. We're asking you, God, hallelujah, for you to touch everyone that comes through those doors. Bind the hand of the enemy. Hallelujah. Loose the body, God. Hallelujah. We're asking in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We are coming in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We have the victory. We walk in victory. We live in victory. We speak in victory. Heart of And we say yes to your will, God. Hallelujah. Have the way, God, in our midst. Lord, bless our pastor and our elect lady, oh God. Bring them back safely. Oh God, let them come back refreshed, oh God. Oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, continue to send their hands in the work of the ministry. Bless Revelation Church family as a whole. In the name of Jesus, bless our sister church, the CAF, oh God, and all the ministers, the pastors, oh God. Everyone that's calling on your name, Lord, you know God. You know your people name by name, one by one. You know your people everywhere, God. We're praying blessings upon them, God. Bless our leader of our country, Lord. Bless, oh God, we ask for the peace of Jerusalem, God. We pray for that, Lord. We ask that you help, Lord. Oh God, help step in like only you can. Oh God, remember the, remember the innocent ones, God. In the name of Jesus, cover and keep us, Lord. Be pleased with our praise and worship. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We are going to read as our opening scripture beginning in the 51st chapter of Isaiah. It's regarding a report. It says, who hath believed our report? And to whom the arm of the Lord is revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He hath no, com no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. We and we as hid our we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our grief and carried our sorrow. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. May the Lord add a blessing to the reader, that's me, and the hearers, as you and me, of his word. Amen? Amen. Amen. There's a report here. Though the name is not mentioned, we know who they're talking about. Amen? Amen. The he in here is Jesus. It's Jesus. Hallelujah. In case you're wondering who is this in this report, it's Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Precious Jesus. It's Jesus. Hallelujah. It's Jesus. Oh, it is Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus.
well of you that says something. When they know you're here, they know you love them, and yet give them the truth. That's a good thing. So this is good ground. So there are ways to give, amen. This is offering time, amen. We're yet giving offering the sacrifices of our lips, our praise is the offering. But there are other ways, monetary. At this time, if you like, you may take time to bring your offering, amen, or give it on Zelle, or give the five cash app, or right in person here. And we are located ah, here. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. 8229 South San Pedro Street in the city of Los Angeles, California. Our zip code is 9003. Amen. Right on the corner of 8th Street. Hallelujah. In place. Can't miss it. The little triangle of the church. Full of love. And let me let you know. We have the lights on for you. People Good have gone through changes since. The and some people they go to their jobs and they not feel come to come back in the church. I don't know how that works. However, we have kept the lights on for you. Hallelujah. And this is the lighthouse here. Amen. Pastor P always tell us when you see the light, get to light. Hallelujah. And after you get to light, Amen. Walk in the light. Because guess who Jesus. is? Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, I keep hearing that name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I keep hearing that name because that's his name. And guess what? He responds to his name. Amen. Jesus is the light of the world. And then if you go out sometime on the ocean, if you've been, if you've been out there, they're on a cruise now. And I'm sure they can see the stars when they go up on the deck, how beautiful, how great the heavens are. But I'll tell you something. Many people go out and they make sure they find the lighthouse because the lighthouse is a refuge, is a guide for the ships. And that's who we are today here in this community. We are light. We are lighthouse. And we like to make sure we remain like that. Amen? We have the light of God. Hallelujah. Because so many are in God. So we thank God for choosing us. Amen. To so be right on this corner. So I said that to say this is good ground. And if you like to give, you are giving to good ground. Amen. And at this time, we want to thank you in advance for what you have given. And we pray that God bless you. And baby, he said it's not always monetary blessings. Some people need blessings in their health. Some people need blessing in situations. Some people just need peace of mind. Don't you know that's a real good thing to have? Some people have a whole lot of money but no peace. So when the Lord returns his blessings upon you, it may be a monetary. We thank him for that. But we are asking when he brings to bless you in good health and peace. Amen. Even as your soul prospers. Amen. And so at this time, we're going to have a mus musical selection from our own um, Brother Troy. And I'll come down to the Thank you. 
was there. To my heart. There, there. It was there to my heart. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. I thank God for being here this morning. I thank God for just being God. Amen. Amen. I thank God for just loving us. Be mindful of us. I thank God. I give honor to God. I give honor to my pastor, Elder Perkins, and First Lady Perkins in their absence. I give honor to the ministers that are here today. I give honor to, honor to our musicians. I give honor to everyone that is in the house on today. I bless God. I bless God for the ones that are online and on Facebook Live, Zoom, and whoever will come to see this later, I give honor to you. I'm not here to keep you long. I just came to give you a word from the Lord. And whatever he says, that's what I will say. But then when he stops, I stop. I bless him on today. We're in the last Sunday of thankful, thankful Sundays. And so I, I bless God because I'm so thankful. That's one of my favorite congregational songs. And one reason it became one of my favorites is because when it said it was dead to my heart. And when someone begins to think about dead to my heart, it was then there. But it reached my heart now. And I bless God for the then and now. And I give thanks unto God for then and now because he didn't have to. But because he did, I'm so grateful. I'm beyond grateful. I owe him my life. Just because. You know how you give, some people give the just because gifts? Just because I love you. Or they come and just say something just because. But Jesus, just because I love you, just because I give you my life, I just do it just because it's dead to my heart. He didn't have to do that, but because he did, it was applied to my heart. And it goes somewhere to where we're going to this morning. Bear with me. Um, top side, to be tired. Some people don't even know what tired is. Some people don't even, I, I, I bless God because you have some people dealing with things that it don't, their minds won't tell them that their body is tired. All right. You deal with, you people are dealing with dementia. Some people are dealing with Alzheimer's. And in the field that I work in, we get a lot of missing people. And because of the missing people, they leave, you know, the caregiver either, they leave it, they, they, the person is not supposed to be unattended. And so they, when we have to go and say, what, what happened? They said, well, all we did was let him go outside and we was not, that's not what you were supposed to do because what it does is there they walk away. And for that brief moment, they don't even know how to get back even if they go down the street. We found, we found some people to leave their city that they reside in and end up in a whole other city. And, and some of them have walked to a whole other city. Why? Because their mind is not telling them they're tired. Their mind is not telling them that they need their medication. Their mind is not telling them that this is what's going on with you. So I thank God for the tiredness in that I feel in my body. Because the, the key is, I feel it. Yeah. And I know it to be. So you don't take it for granted what your mind tells you now. Because if you don't, just think that if it wasn't for the grace of God, 
and the mercies of God, where will we be? Yes. So this morning, um, I want to talk a little bit on then to now, the good, the bad, and ugly. He's undefeated in all things. Then and now, he's still undefeated. Through the good, the bad, and the ugly of our lives, he's undefeated. Many things have happened to people in their lives, and 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 mind you, we we and it has it has caused trauma to them. And we as human beings, when it has caused trauma, it affects somewhat of our future. It affects somewhat of how we move. It affects somewhat of how we go throughout our life daily because sometimes it'll change the way you see some things. It'll change the way you, you deal with some things. But then when you have come in contact with God, when you have come in contact with God and, and God has renewed your vision through the Holy Ghost, through receiving the Holy Ghost, when he has renewed the way you see things, when he, when you start seeing that throughout everything, he was still there. When you begin to look at the fact that even though I went through this, he was still there. Some people say, how is that possible? Why? When, why did he allow that to happen to me? But here it saying through the good, the bad, and the other. And then you wonder why in Psalms 34 it said, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Here, you hear, you still see David talking about, oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. But then he gives the reason why. Because he said, I sought the Lord and the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Here, when you when you hear, you will hear him say, at all times it's because it's going to be some times you won't feel like. It's going to be some bad times. Everything is not going to stay good. You're going to have some ugly and you're going to have some bad times. But you still need the blessing. Why? Because he's undefeated. He's an undefeated God. And I say that because some people have other gods that they're worshiping. But this God is undefeated. My God is undefeated. You can tell me about choice, but I know a God that's undefeated. And that's why it was in my spirit when I was saying it was dead to my heart that the blood was applied all the way back then till now. See, we have a then and we have a now. And he's been undefeated then and he's been undefeated now. Because when you look at the timeline, you look at what he gets down through the generation. And then you come to you. Then as he adds, before you were even born, you had testimony. There were testimonies of deliverance. But now as you come to, when you come to know him in a more excellent way, and then you start, we start dealing with different things that God has brought you through, and then you start saying, Oh my goodness, I, I would have, where would I have been if he had not? Then you begin to say, I bless the Lord. Why? Because he is undefeated. In everything, he's undefeated. We might not understand why he has taken us or, or allowed us to go through the routes that we have went through. But to go through the routes that we have gone through and come out with a right mind. Come out with still love in your heart. Somewhere in your mind, you've got to bless.
blessing because it could have went another way. And without God, it would have went another way. Without it. There's a song that says, without God, I can do nothing. Without God, I will fail. Without him, I would be like a ship without a sail. Reason being because without God, there's no direction. Because the enemy would have you all over the place with no mindset of direction. But here, here we have a God that's undefeated through all the good, the bad, and the ugly. He's a God of the mountaintop, just like he's a God of the valleys. Whether you're in the valley and you go through a dark time, which you will do. I've, I've dealt with many dark times. I've dealt with many dark times. And he still, he has never left me. He's always been there. And I can say he's always been there because I'm here to tell you. I thank God for what he's brought me through. I thank God for the testimonies that I have to give you as a witness to say, I give thanks to God. I can bless him. So I can stand and say, I, can, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises show continually. Do I feel like blessing him all the time? No. And we got to be honest about it. No, sometimes you got to stir it up. Yeah. You have to stir it up because your flesh is not going to always do it. But when I recall to my mind, as in Psalms 136, and when I start thinking about how his mercy endures forever. Yeah. When I continue to think about, we read this scripture once before in service, and when I read that scripture and I start thinking about how he did and how he how he delivered Israel, how he came on down and then he said when he got to us. Thank you, Jesus. Then I think about dead to my heart was the blood applied. Because he didn't just do it for them. He was thinking of me when he went to the cross. I was in the mind and the heart of God when he went to the cross. You can make it personal to you too. You can say you was in the heart of God. But then when you get over to, uh, I believe it's 1 Thessalonians, and it said, in all things give thanks. But this is the will of God, Christ Jesus, concerning you. In all things give thanks. How do you do that when you're going through? How do you do that? How do you continue to bless him? How do you continue to say, God, you're good. God, you're wonderful. God did it and you're going through. Because you will go through. But I, I tend to recall in my mind when it was worse than what it is now. And I'm not talking about so much of the time, but I'm talking about my different situations. Sometimes you gotta recall those things. You gotta recall when God was there and, and nobody else was there. You gotta recall those times when you cried and it was times you couldn't tell your family nothing, but God was there. You gotta recall those times where you were by yourself and you said quiet prayers and he he blessed you publicly. And people look at you and they look and say, Oh, God just be blessing you, but you know what you cried for. You know what you was in, in need of. And God just did it for you. Because you didn't tell nobody. But to the outside the eyes, it looks like just a blessing, but then here it is, he delivered you. He delivered you. He didn't let you go so far in or so far out. He delivered you. But then 
sin, when it gets so bad, and it gets to the point, or even if you're going through right now, it gets to the point, remember, then, to now, he's undefeated. When he defeated Pharaoh, he's undefeated. That was all the way back then. When he delivered the children of Israel, it was back then. And he still did it. He's still setting free. He's still dealing with individual pharaohs. He's still dealing with those. He's still dealing with individual Goliaths. I don't know what your Goliath is, but he's still delivering. I don't know what your pharaoh is, but he's still delivering. Because he delivered then and he's delivering now. And when you can recall to your mind and you can go to Psalms 136 and then you just remember because sometimes he has to, he'll remind you who he is. He killed kings for us. He moved. These things are relevant today because you have, sometimes you have to go back and that's why he said, hey, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, that means there has been a collection of things that he's done. So that means you have to recall to your mind what he's already done. And when you recall to your mind what he's already done, that's the thing. But where I stand now in this place, he's still undefeated. Just because I'm going through now, that does not mean that he can't do it. I got to think about what he's already done to bring me to this place. And when I think about how he has kept me and I'm here in this place, and then I, I say, okay, God, now I know. That's how I know that should come about. And I'm not surprised when he does so. Sometimes I'm in awe of him. Sometimes I'm in awe how he did it. But do I don't see it? I, I don't have a doubt that he cannot do it. The Hebrew boy said, even if he don't, it's not that he can. He can. Even if he decides not to, it's not that he can. He can. Because he's undefeated. And then what got me about the Hebrew boys, he was standing. In it with them. Not only am I going to deliver you, but I'm in here with you. We're going out together. I'm bringing you out. We're going to walk it out of this fire together. And they're going to know you have been delivered by me. There are things that we're dealing with in this present moment and time that God has to remind us. Okay, I need you to remember that you dealt with something worse than this. All of us have been, and at some point in time, well, I'm going to say this. We may not have known it because, you know, when we pray, we've heard this prayer since we were kids, since we were children. Lord, we thank you for the danger seen and unseen. Do you know when death was close to you? I don't know all the time that death was close to me. But for the times I knew, Lord, I thank you. For the times I didn't know, God, I thank you. See, there's a level of, I, 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 I don't always see, and I can't see everything because he, he's God. But I thank God for just being a God of the, the bad and the ugly. Because that describes me. I wasn't always good. I mostly represented the bad and the ugly. But sin is ugly. Sin will cause you to look horrible. And you walk around thinking you look good. You're walking around thinking you got it like you look like you got it all together, but sin is not a good look on anybody. 
But here it is, he's still God. And he still calls you. He still says there's purpose in you. Even when it's ugly, he said you still got purpose. Even when the situation is bad and you don't even see no way out of it, he said, I'm going to bring you through because there's a testimony in this. It's, it's, you know, it's easy for somebody to, when everything's going good, you can praise God. Or you can, you're, you're sitting there, you, it, everybody want to go to church on Easter, Mother's Day, and maybe Christmas. Or they fill the church up on that first Sunday of the New Year. Because they have, they want to say, let's start, the, I'm going to start the New Year off right. And they go to church. And do they continue? No. Their intentions were, let me start the good, the good you all right. But their right was, just let me come to the church building. Not to change my ways, not to choose God, but let me, let me just give some more time to the church building. But the good, the bad, and the ugly is not just the church building. The good, the bad, and the ugly is you. We, as people, contain good, bad, and ugly. There's some good because when he made woman and man, he said, it is good. But when sin came about, it's bad. And in some instances, as time goes on, it became ugly. When he flooded the world, but he saved Noah and his family. He saw good and he saved Noah and his family. Then there was Lot. He had, he said, Lot, if you could find how many people in, in the city are saving. If you could find them. As you can see it when you read it, he did. It was ugly in Sodom and Gomorrah. Some people don't even like to mention that. They don't necessarily to say, oh, no, Sodom and Gomorrah, that didn't mean that. Yes, it did. It, it, it was filthiness in Sodom and Gomorrah. It was past bad. It was straight ugly. Nastiness. Abomination in Sodom and Gomorrah. But here, Lachlan was in there. But when he said, get out, get your family and get out, they got out. And he destroyed the city. And you get to Nineveh. Nineveh, Jonah had to go and deliver a word. Because there was a chance for Nineveh. Turn. I'm trying to show you there's good here. Turn. They did. They did. Once Jonah got there and did what he was supposed to do, they did. They did good for uh, just so many years. And then turned again. Let me tell you. One night God had me up by two or three months. And I could, I, I, he, he said, I, when I said I was going to make it desolate, I meant what I said. I looked up where Nineveh should have been. Gone. It's nothing there. Nothing. He meant what he said. I, I'm saying it was ugly because here it is. He's a God of the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's not a. It's not to call. I'm not trying to make no. Well, I'm gonna say it like this: If you get mad, I'm sorry you're mad, but I gotta tell the truth. He's a God of the good, bad, and the ugly, but He gives all of it a chance. But He lets you know that this is bad. He lets you know that this is ugly. He gives you a chance to turn it. He gives you a chance to stop. He gives you a chance to say, God, help me. But once you have tasted 
See, there's a way that when when you are when you haven't known God, you haven't known God in a more excellent way, and then you don't have the Holy Ghost. He has blessed you. He has laid his hands upon you. And you feel the blessing of God. You get the you you feel the presence of God to an extent. But there's a more excellent way. He wants you to come a little bit farther in. Come on in and accept him. Come on and pass accepting him with your mouth. You got to accept him and repent. And say, God, I need you to abide in me. I don't want to be a part of the ugly. But when he said, in all things, in all things, I can't, I can't begin to tell you about how, how before repeat, repenting and getting the Holy Ghost, how I would, I would sit there and cry and say, God, I love you, I love you, I love you. I would sit there and tell him because I know the goodness of God. See, I'm sorry. You can know the goodness of God and don't have the Holy Ghost. You can see and have experienced some goodness of him and don't have the Holy Ghost. But the more excellent way is to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. But it still don't mean, see, as you keep blessing him, God's going to keep pulling. He's going to keep calling. He's going to keep, he's going to keep on because he's giving you a chance. And so with that, that's why I am so grateful. That's why I can give thanks on thankful, thankful Sunday, uh, all through the thankful Sundays. Because when I think about the then and the now, it was people back then that, that, that love, that said they loved God once they saw the goodness and felt the goodness and was fed by him in the wilderness. It was people that they didn't make it over. They didn't make it over. But I'm here today to tell you and to offer that you can make it over. You can make it over. You can, you can accept him. You can repent and be baptized. In the name of Jesus, for the remission of your sins. To receive the free gift of the Holy Ghost. But you got to repent. Then you will understand why we bless the Lord at all times. Then you will understand why we give thanks in all things. Then you understand why we deal with the good, bad, and the ugly, and we still show up. Then you understand why we keep going no matter what happens because he's good. We can still say he's good. You Then you'll understand why regardless of what we can say, I bless the Lord. You understand it. And some people, some people may say, I understand it already. But you still won't choose God. I would rather choose the one that that is there with me through everything. Everything that I need, every, everything that I need. He's everything that I could ever want. You need a friend, he is that. He's, you need somebody to comfort you, he's that. Some people can say, you lonely, no. I may be alone, but I'm not lonely. Because he's a company keeper. He won't allow me when I'm blessing him, when I have him in the forefront, he won't allow me to get so low when I know, but I don't think he's there. I know he, ha he has reached the low, the lowest of the low, because I have been there. I have been there before salvation. I have been low. And God let me know, but you got to reach me. Call on me. You don't, you don't, you don't understand how near he is to the one that calls him. But I can bless him for the then and now. 
because I trust him. Because as I look back over my life, I see he's undefeated. Not just in my life, I can see him being undefeated in someone else's. I can see how he has brought other people. I can see it. Why? Because I know my God. I know how he brought me. You know, so you know how they say, prove me. I can see God is undefeated, how he's kept us, Thank you. how he's brought us. Now, speak, other people can go in depth in their testimonies. They can give you details. Where I may not can give you a whole lot of details about their testimony. But I can tell you about mine. And that's why I can bless him. That's why I can give him thanks in all things. That's why I can say to the good, the bad, and the ugly, undefeated. I will never, I will always advise someone to try God. Trust God. Prove God. Ask him. Because when you truly ask him, he'll show up. And once he show up, he'll let you know he's the one that did it. And there's no doubt in nobody's mind because no, nobody else could do what he does. Nobody else could have seen certain things but him. But I bless him. I bless him. And his praise shall continue to be in my heart. Why? Because guess what? As I walk this walk, there's no reason for me not to. There's no reason for me not to bless him. There's not a reason that I shouldn't give thanks. There's not a reason that I shouldn't tell God I love him. Because when you tend to know who holds your life, who is the God of life who gave it and who can take it away? When you understand and you know, there's no reason why I shouldn't love you. I don't go a day without saying, God, I love you. I don't go a day without saying, thank you, Lord. Why? Because I'm a walking miracle. Because I know what I was before salvation. I know that had I died where I was, I would be held bound. But he saw fit. He saw fit to bring, to let me see that I too can be saved. And he saw fit to bring me in. And I'm grateful because he allowed grace and mercy. He extended that to me. That's why when I sing there to my heart, I remember the cross. I, I, I look at the cross and it's gory and ugly as it was. It still was a good thing. That was bad and ugly. But it still was a good thing. Why? Because what he did saved us. What he did was for us. To have better, to have eternal life. So I bless God. I thank God. I'm loving on Him. And that's why, in all things, no matter what, it does not matter what. In all things, I can tell God, in all things, I can tell Him thank you. It's rough, God, but I'm going to thank you. I don't like it here, but I got to thank you because I'm still standing. Even though I'm in a place that I don't like, even when I don't see how it's going to happen for me, I don't like it here, but I thank you. I thank you that I can feel the pain that I feel. I thank you because my mind is telling me what I feel. I thank you that I can remember. I thank you. Some 
things we take for granted, I don't take it for granted. Small things people take for granted, or, or when I, I don't care where I am, I see, when I see different uh, handicapped people, and I, uh, I see different things, and I just say, Lord, I thank you. I'm moving. I don't, I don't, I don't know the old right there. I am just sometimes things bring tears to my eyes because I know where I could have been. I could have died from cirrhosis of the liver. I could be sitting in somebody with a back on me. I could be sitting in somebody's hospital. Why? Because I wasn't caring about my own health. I was, I was enjoying life, as they say. And my enjoying life could have cost me mine. Or it could have made me be like some other people with ailments that are forever that I have a, you know, have a, have to have disabilities for. But I thank you. Thank you, Lord. He preserved me. Sometimes when I give my testimony of alcoholism and, and, and lesbianism, they're like, real? You was what? I thank God for, for preserving me. I thank God for just, when we say we don't look like what we've been through, believe it. Because many things could have happened. Many things could have transpired, transpired between then and now, between not having salvation and between salvation. Things, if you look at people around, things have aged people. They have aged people. And when they age, I'm talking about, they look horrible. I'm not, I'm not putting no kind of thing people think that I'm talking about them bad. I have seen people I went to school with, and they look like they could be my great aunt. Or they look older than, way older than me. Now, when we talk, and they, when they tell me the stuff, they were dealing with what they did. I'm looking like, thank God. And all in my insides, through the conversation, Lord, I thank you. Because it wasn't like I would, I didn't do drugs, but I did alcohol. And I thank God that I, he preserved me. And I look at, and I say, God, that could have been me. I've seen some friends Backed by the one of the metro rails. God, that could have been me. Many things, but here I am. No, am I on the top of the heap? No, but I give thanks. I bless it. Do I have everything I would like? I would I, that I desire. No, but I give thanks. I give thanks for what I could have been, but I'm not. I give glory to God. I, give, I bless him because what he didn't allow. But some things we asked for, and had we, had we gotten those things, where would it have taken us? He, he saw what was down the road and didn't let us do it. He saw what was down the road and said, no, because if I let you do this, you look, it's going to take you away from me. No. So I thank God. I constantly thank him. I, I can remember that when searching for employment, I took a test for a position five times. Every time I came up, I, I said, no, I'm more, because that's the field I was in, for, in study. When I went to school, and uh, I was specializing in juvenile justice. And so I was going to go on probation five times. God would not let me keep that past that test. I finally said, "Okay, God, I'm not going to take it. I'm done. I'm going to do it." And I did. 
did not, I would not take the test again. Still have. And when you, if you read it, if you ever read the news, the probation department is almost level, almost. The juvenile. They've shut down so many juvenile halls and and then there's so many deaths went through there. I'm talking about since COVID. They lost so many people. Then they moved a whole lot of people. Then they then they moved, they, they told people, if you don't, if you they made off, they shifted everybody and closed all the juvenile halls this way and moved everybody to Silmar. And they said, if you can't go to Silmar, then you might as well quit. People were getting, you know, they had to try to find another job because Silmar, you know, that's the only choice you get it. I got so far from my home. But they, if they wanted to keep their job, they had to go to Silmar. God knew. God knew. I didn't know. I'm thinking I, that's what I wanted. I want to go and, and work in the juvenile halls. Work in the, and God did not let me. So when I don't see, it's still good to be obedient because you gotta trust him. And mind you, today I stand here still having to trust God with things that I'm going through as I come to encourage you. And I still tell the devil, he's undefeated. God is undefeated. I will not give in to what, what he says, what the enemy says. God sees my situation from the, from the end, from the beginning, and I trust him. So I can give thanks. I can bless him. I can say I love you and I thank you, God. Why? Because whatever he says is for my good. I trust him because it's from uh, this year, I mean, yeah, this year, maybe, I think 18 years, say. I never... I'm telling you, from 2004 to now, late 2003, he took the taste of alcohol out of my mind. And I hadn't picked it up since. I didn't go through AA. I didn't go through a therapist. I didn't go through anything. I turned and faced God. Say, God, you got to take it. I want you to take it, but I was sincere in my heart. He took it. And I had to look back. I had no desire to drink. I had no desire for anything that he delivered me from. I had no desire. And it'll be 18 years, and I'm grateful. I have that, that, that don't mean that I that I have not made mistakes that I you know this walk is not without mistakes this walk is not saying it's not without saying God forgive me Lord help me it's not without that amen amen but I gotta be willing to lay my flesh in front of him and say God do it amen God keep me God fix it God take it if it's not like you take it And I do it gladly while I'm blessing him because I thank the Lord that he found something and he let me know. You know, some people will sit there and let you, will sit there and see you going into, into something and know it's going to be harmful and they don't tell you. And now they'll say, no, I'm going to let them find out on their own. God, being as loving as he is, didn't allow me, and I bless him. He won't allow me to continue if he, when he sees something in me that needs to be corrected. He don't allow me. Why? Because my desire is to make it. My desire is to meet God in peace. And some people will say, yeah, I want to see my mama again. I want to see this. Uh, after I see Jesus. My mama walked up to me, thank God, but I have to see Jesus first. 
Because that's what I'm that's what I'm living for. Amen. I'm living to live again with him. Amen. I'm living to live an eternal life. I'm living for that. I'm looking forward to that. I strive to do that. Because that's 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 the ultimate goal, eternal life. So yes, I bless God for the then and now. Bless God for the good, bad, and the ugly. In all things, I give thanks for the good, the bad, and the ugly. But I do that gladly. Why? Because I know it who I believe. I bless him because even in all of that, he's still God. Even in all of that, he's still good. Even with the things I go through, he's still good. He's proven himself to me, and I love him. So I admonish you, the ones that don't have him, get him. Go down in his name. Repent and go down in his name. Try God. He won't fail you. Try God. You will love him. You wouldn't want to do nothing but love him. Try God. To the ones that have it, strive a little more. Work a little more. Because he's the God of the good, bad, and ugly. And no matter how ugly it gets, know that he's right there with you. He will never leave you or he will never forsake you. He's there. So you can continue to bless him. You can keep on giving thanks. But that's because that's what he wants you to do. Because in blessing him, your vision is clear and you'll see God. Evangelist always often say that she she often uh would was would, would talk about only the righteous can see God. When you just begin to bless him and continually thank you, show up and you'll see. And you'll see his hand in your life. So we bless God on, t- on today. I hope I help somebody this morning. I hope I encourage someone this morning. Because in all things we give thanks. And we bless the Lord continually. Because there's nothing better. I found it to be nothing better than to live for Christ. Nothing. Nothing can compare to this. Nothing. You can think you living good out there doing, you know, just doing things to say, well, I'm, I'm living my best life. No. Your best life is after salvation. Because you got somebody that is undefeated standing with you. So I bless God on today. If there's anyone that needs prayer, anyone that needs prayer, anyone that anyone that we're here to pray for you. We're here to and help you to get to that next place. You may you may want to give it to God, but don't know how. But we're here to help you with that. I hope you felt encouraged because He's here. He's here to do that for you. He's here if you want salvation.
because it was dead to our heart that the blood was applied. That one of the ugliest places in history, the crucifixion, that was one of the ugliest places that peace came. It was one of the ugliest places that love was shown. It was one of the most glorious places. But there, that's the way it was applied to you. The ones that are online, we continue to pray for you. We continue to reach out and we continue to let you know that God loves you. May God be with you. We we sit, we send prayers to you right now. All the bereaved families. We don't want to let you know that throughout all of this, God is still with you. And we send comfort to you. All the sick and the shut in. We, we thank God and we sing. And we, we can ask God to touch your bodies, give you strength, because we know that he can do it. He's a healer, he's a comforter, and he's a keeper. But, but we also want you to understand it all things. Yeah, thanks. But this is the will of God. I'm sorry. Turn it back into the hands of the Lord. Part 
because the sweet liturgy, so many of us love the Christmas season, the season of giving. And we already, we're coming from the season of thankfulness, which really that is all year long. But it's good to have thankfulness and then right after that, giving. Isn't that wonderful how it, 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 it complements each other? We're thankful that we have, therefore we share and we give. So it's right on time. And at this time, if there are no other, um, no other, anything else to be said or done, thank you all for that message. Amen. It is the word that is going to save us. And he is the God of not just the mountains, but the valleys. He is our Lord and our God. He'll meet us right, right where we are. And that's what Emmanuel's heart was letting us know. When we recall to our mind what he's already brought us through, remember that. Hold fast that which is good. Bring it back to the forefront of your mind and, let, and remind yourself if he did it there, he can do it today. Why? Because he is undefeated. Amen? Amen. So at this time, um, we're going to stand and be dismissed. Praise God for you, Kendra. And amen. And God for the selection, um, Brother Troy Davis. And we're just going to uh, make sure pastor is happy when he gets back because it's good when a pastor can go and not have to worry about his church. Amen? So we thank God for that. We in, all, in all things, we give thanks. So at this time, we want to stand and be dismissed. Amen. And it's good, too. I was talking to somebody about benedictions. Benedictions are good because they leave you with a blessing. Moses told Aaron to speak over the people. And bless them. And this was done in the benediction right to out before the benediction. So don't cut yourself self short of your blessing right to out before the benediction. Let the blessings be placed upon you. The man and the mouth of the man and woman of God by the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we bless you today. We thank you for the word we heard on today. We thank you for being with us all day long from Sunday school to now. How you covered and protected us. How you fed our very souls, God. We thank you for our pastor and let Lady of Mary our way resting on God and ask you to give them a safe, safe travel back. We thank you for a wonderful time with our family during Thanksgiving, oh God. We ask that you continue to be with us, oh God. Let your blessings be upon us, God. Let your face shine upon us. Hallelujah. Be with us, oh God, and we will continue to give you the glory, honor, protect, and keep us until we return at the appointed time. Giving you praise because you are yet good. Hallelujah. You are good and your truth endure forever. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.